in this video, we will request ChatGPT a more detailed network configuration. Let's see if he is smarter than the average network engineers. We will do some lab demonstration. From ChatGPT, we will just simply copy and paste the configuration output. And let's see if it will satisfy our network requirement. And let's see if the network convergence will work. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the Cloud and Data Center! Rock star! And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in Cloud and Data Center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. I have here two routers connected point to point. Both have LAN connected. Router 1 or R1 connected to the PC with an IP address of 192.168.10.1 and router 2 connected to the server with an IP address of 192.168.20.2. What we're going to do is we're going to configure router 1 and router 2 using ChatGPT. On this scenario, router 1 and router 2 has zero configuration. And a PC and the server has already an IP address configured as well as default gateway. Now, what we're going to do is we'll check the tabs. Uh, this is router 1. I'm going to hit enter. And uh, this is router 2. Okay, and as you can see, it's, it is a switch because this is not really our router 1 and router 2. This is a multi-layer switch. Now, let's go to ChatGPT. Let me just hit refresh. Okay, so let's start the uh, request to ChatGPT. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two Cisco router configuration. Okay, and um, host names are R1 and R2. What else we need to configure? All right, so we need to have a point-to-point -point configuration on our interface, interface 0 slash 0. So let's add that. Uh, so with interface if 0 slash 0 connected point to point okay with uh, let's specify the network address um the network ip address of let's say 10.0.0 slash 30 okay this is the uh this will be the uh, network in between router one and r excuse me router one and router two so r1 has an ip address um let's see router one or r1 has an ip address of this 192.168.10.254 because this is the default gateway of the PC assigned um, to it. Okay, so there's already configured default gateway to PC and the server. So we need to also specify this in our chat GPT request. So I'm going to add 192.168.10.254 and R2 has an IP address of 192.168.20.254 both on interface eth01 there you go eth01 r1 eth01 also on r2 so let's add both on interface eth01 there you go um what else uh we will also want to enable ospf because our goal is from this pc it should be able to reach the server and actually, I want to test that. Okay, so this is the PC. Oops. So this is the PC. What we're going to do is we will test if PC can reach server. Okay, so it, um, I made a typo. Instead of EN, I type EV. So let's just wait for that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to enable dynamic routing protocol. So the dynamic routing protocol that... Ah! I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Um... <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I will just copy and paste and then uh, I will just continue our request. We want to enable OSBF. Okay. So 
uh, dynamic routing protocol. It can be any dynamic routing protocol, but you know, for testing purposes, for simplicity, I'm going to use OSPF. So we're going to enable OSPF on both routers. Okay. And it will, it should advertise, advertise all interfaces. So the goal is for R1 to advertise this network and R2 to advertise this network as well. So, okay, look, let's go back to PC and then I will try to ping 192.168.20.2. Okay, this is the IP address of the server. So, as you can see, it's not reachable. And why? Because R1 and R2 has no configuration yet. Okay, so let's go back to ChatGPT and, uh, okay, so let's continue. We're going to enable OSPF on both routers. Okay, advertising all interfaces. These are uh, the ETH0 slash 0 and ETH0 slash 1. Okay, what else? I will also disable, okay, switch port on all configured interfaces. Okay, and why? Because going back, these are switches, layer 3 switches. So by default, all interface of a layer 3 switches um, are into layer two mode, okay, switch port mode. We need to disable it. Okay, so as you can see, um, ping wasn't successful. Now I will just send this request to ChatGPT. Let's see if it can provide us the configuration. And it replied, sure, here's the complete configuration for both routers based on your requirements. Okay, for router one, this is the IP address Look at that uh, on ETH00 and ETH01. Okay, it disabled the switch port and uh, this is the router OSPF configuration. Okay, so it advertised using network command. Um, it uses also area zero. We didn't actually specify which area, but it assumes this is the backbone. Okay, this is the um, backbone area. We're only using single area network. And uh, there you go. Um, we have two configuration for both router one and R2. And what else do we have here? In the above configuration, we have configure point to point. Well, basically this is just a summary of our request. Now, what I'm gonna do is I will copy this configuration and I'm gonna paste it. And before I paste it, let's go first to configuration terminal. And okay, so so to paste this, I need to do this. Copy. Okay, and uh, I'll paste it here. Okay, and uh, there. Okay, so it has... Alright, so there is... Alright, so for whatever reason... It says no switch port. Ah, because the no switch port should come first. So this is a little... Okay, so uh, this is incorrect. Why? Because there's no switch port should come first before assigning the IP address. So what I'm going to do to make this work, I'm going to repeat the copy and paste. Okay, Um. hold on. Or let's repeat the copy and paste. Okay, let's repeat the copy and paste. There you go. There you go. And uh, let's do this in our router 2 as well. So I think that is the only flaw. Because the no switch port should be configured before the IP address command. All right, uh, so this is the router 2 or R2. I will click this and then I'm going to hit enter. As you can see, it didn't accept the IP address command because it requires no switch port configuration first. But if I redo the configuration, everything is accepted. Okay, now let's check the OSPF status. So if I do show IP route or do show IP route, Okay, and as you can see, ah, there's still no OSPF configuration. Uh, I, I mean, there's still no OSPF adjacencies. 
how about the OSPF configuration? It's already here, but okay, let's let's check. Oh, there you go. So it was a little delay. It's now saying loading to full. So the adjacencies has already formed. If I do show IP route, there you go. We are we are now learning, or we have learned 192.168.20.0. Okay, so a few seconds ago, it wasn't here yet. And if I do show IP OSPF neighbors, I should be able to see the neighbor 10.0.0.2 IP address. Okay, now if I go to R2, and if I do show IP route, I should also learn the 192.168.10.0 network. Okay, and that is the goal here for router one to learn this network so that the PC should be able to reach the destination server. Same with R2, it should be able to learn this network so that the server will be able to respond back to PC. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'll just simply ping or rerun the ping command that we used earlier for testing. So I will just hit enter now, ping 192.168.20.2. And before I hit enter, Okay, before the moment of truth, what do you think will happen? Will this be successful? Let's try it now. There you go. As you can see, the PC can now reach the server. What we did is from zero configuration of R1 and R2, we come up or we came up with a simple, okay, but very effective complete configuration of assigning hostname, configuring IP addresses of both Ethernet 00 and Ethernet 01, and enabling OSPF configuration. Again, this is done by an AI chat GPT. I was very disappointed on the response of chat GPT from the previous video. Let's ask it again. Let's see if we got smarter after just a few days, we will ask the same question. Okay, so let's ask it. Shall we use SDP in data centers? And what are the alternatives? Okay, and uh, I'm gonna hit enter now. He is thinking, now he's responding. SDP is commonly used in traditional network design to prevent loops in Ethernet networks, of course. Uh, SDP has been widely used in the past. It may not be the best solution, but for modern data centers, there are several reasons for this, including SDP can result in efficient use of network bandwidth. SDP can cause network convergence issues, and SDP does not support multipathing. Now, here are some of the alternatives. So, the, more, the most common alternatives in designing network are TRIL. Okay, this is layer two routing protocol that enables multipathing. We have VXLAN or virtual, excuse me, virtual extensible LAN, which is a layer three overlay network. We also have Fabric Path. This is a Cisco proprietary technology. is almost, if not already obsolete. Okay, EVPN, probably the best solution, is actually an update or an enhancement of VXLAN. EVPN stands for Ethernet VPN. It's a layer 2 VPN technology that enables multi-tenancy and network virtualization. So what we have here <laughs> is the answer that I am looking for. Okay, good work. You are getting smarter, ChatGPT. So what do you think? Is ChatGPT is smarter than the average network engineer? Which one is better? Python network automation or ChatGPT for network engineers? Comment below if you have any questions. And don't forget to hit the like button.